Hello, everyone. Welcome to Nails and Beauty Talk. I am your host, Asia the Bird. I have a very special guest with me today. She's a nail artist. Please welcome Miss Latis De Los Santos. Hello, Miss Latis. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. You are most welcome. I hope I pronounced your uh, name correctly. Miss Ladies. Miss Ladies. Or miss, whatever. Either one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Miss Ladies. Okay, um, so I want to go ahead and kickstart um, this interview by asking where are you originally from and how did you get started into the nail industry? I was born in the Bronx, New York, <laughs> um, and I got started in the nail industry because I used to work in a nightclub in Tampa. I mean, I've always been into art, um, but mm -hmm. it took off more or less when I was working at a nightclub in Tampa and I used to do my nails kind of in themes. So people mm -hmm. started taking notice of what I would do with my nails. And then that transpired into me doing nails for the bartenders, for you know people that attended sometimes events and stuff at the club. And then I just decided eventually like, I'm gonna take my ass to school so I can start getting paid for this. Right. And yeah, it just became bigger and bigger from there. <laughs> Oh, that's really, really cool. Now, I want to get into like your art style. Like, how could you describe your nail art style? Well, I would describe it as otherworldly, ethereal, magical, surreal. Um, and yeah, that's the main ways I would describe my art style. Cool, cool. Now, in terms of like, who are like your favorite nail artists that you would look at? Like, who's like your favorite, favorite nail artist? Ooh, <laughs> that's sticky. Um, honestly, I, I don't have a favorite because I appreciate any and everyone that I follow. I do. Um, but for the sake of the question, um, I do have a fond appreciation for people that have their own artistic styles and just kind of have their own way of doing nails. So right. I would say if I had to name, because I couldn't pick just one, I would say my two top would be Lux K and um, Yuri Osaka. I love, love, love their work. Both of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I love like Naomi Asuda's work. Her work is very, very uh phenomenal, yes. especially with Spifster. Mm -hmm. I like Spifster's work because it's so Spifster's like unique. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her stuff is very, very abstract and very, very unique. And I also mm -hmm. like this um one nail artist, but she is from um she's from Serbia and her name is Koska Boyana. And she mm -hmm. does like these very long sculpture nails, like and it's really, really beautiful. So yeah, there's a lot of nail artists that you can take inspiration from from around the world. So art is just, you know, is out this world in terms of nails. I like the editorial nail and her work, you know, especially the content she creates. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Gracie's stuff is everything. You know, I love the content that she makes. And I also like how she talks about a lot with like marketing in terms of within the nail industry. So I think that's something that's definitely needed for the nail world. And I want to get into your experience owning a salon. So what has been your experience owning your own salon or nail studio? And what are some pieces of advice for someone who wants to own their own nail space? Mm -hmm. um, for me, it's been, you know, a great experience so far. I'm very grateful to be able to have my own space. Um, it may have not started that way because I kind of had to move into my own space uh, suddenly. But I will say in mentioning Gracie, I think it's important um, as nail artists when we have connections with other nail artists because sometimes, you know, one of the things of advice that I would say to new and up and coming nail artists is be extremely humble and also don't be afraid to ask questions. I sometimes don't know everything um, when it comes to editorial work or um, things on pricing or even um, protecting my art legally and things like that. And Gracie was one of the people that I know that I can go to and ask questions as far as, well, how does this work? How mm. do I do this, you know? Um, but as far as owning my own space, like it's been very beneficial to me because I'm someone that um, is distracted very easily. <laughs> so having like my own space where I can play what I want, me and my clients can watch what we want, we can talk about what we want, um, has just been great and therapeutic and I'm very, very grateful. Cool. That's really, really cool. Yeah, it, it seems like it's like very, very good to have like your own space and where you're your own boss. And I think that's very, very important is to have your own. And I want to ask about the nail scene in New York. Like how big is the nail scene within New York, especially um, in the Bronx? Mm -hmm. The nail scene is huge. I would say I'm a humble brag a little bit. Like New York, it usually produces legends. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like <laughs> right. We have so many nail artists that are just like top tier, like I'm saying. So, um, yeah, New York is the city of fashion, the city of everything. You know what I mean? So right. It's, 
great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the thing. You know, you're, you're in the fashion district and, you know, there's so many connections. And yeah, a lot of, I could right. definitely wear a lot of artists, you know, are the top tier in New York, you know, either in New York yeah, or LA. Start here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, most absolutely. I, definitely. Know, like, I lived in Florida and not anything against Florida because there's great artists in Florida too. But whenever I started developing my own style and everything like that, I was like, you know, I, I, I want to challenge myself. So mm -hmm. what's the next step? And for me, I was like, you know, I've always heard if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. So I was like, all right, let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> so, Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, how could you describe the, what's your whole take in terms of nail education here in the United States? And what's your whole take on with no education, how it could be improved? I think schools um, definitely kind of just, you know, teach you the bare minimum. I feel that one of the things um, that would be great um, if they did was if they also, you know, gave the opportunity to nail artists in the industry to maybe, you know, teach certain things or, um, you know, just, be the teachers in a sense because in school really they just give you the basics and like you learn the diseases and stuff like that the, the real work and the real schooling is when you're out <laughs> of nail school and you're in like you have people in front of you so schooling never stops like especially if you want to be successful in this industry you're constantly learning every single day and you should be. you should be looking up education and um learning all the new things that are coming out because in, like you said I'm in New York and, you know, there's always something new. There's always a new style or a new product or whatever. So it's, you have to be open to learning everything. You don't have to do everything, just learn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I can most definitely agree because every day is like a school day. And, you yeah. know, the whole thing with the no education system, because I'm a licensed cosmetologist and I took cosmetology courses during my time in, in high school so before I went to college um, I got my cosmetology license but the whole thing was they only teach you like a small sector of nails they don't teach you everything because cosmetology consists of everything hair nails and aesthetics and I definitely agree that you know you have to learn a lot of things like every every day you know especially if it's, if it's on your own and you know there's nail courses there's nail classes that are out there that can help further education where you don't have to always rely on YouTube and, and things of that nature. And when you learn from a professional who's been in the business of the nail industry, you know, it, it makes a lot of wonders. Yeah. Cause for me, when I went to school, my nail teacher didn't even do nails. She was in skin. <laughs> <laughs> so we all just had to learn really from a book. So when I was out into the, in the fields and I started doing nails, there was a lot of things that I didn't know what the use for them was for because I wasn't taught these things in school. So I kind of had to teach a lot of things to myself or research a lot of things on YouTube. And back when I was doing, when I started doing nails, you mm -hmm. know, there was even this level of gel and stuff that you can paint with. When I started right. doing, I was painting with acrylic paint on polish. <laughs> so mm -hmm. then I had to learn how to paint with gel. And that was, you know, something in itself, you know, being a nail artist, you know, it's rewarding, but also it's expensive too. Because, right. You know, taking these classes and stuff like that, you know, it'll it's worth it, but it's not cheap. <laughs> so exactly. People need to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Now, what is your whole take on pricing and understanding one's worth and value, especially with nail services or press on nails and things into that vicinity? Um, it all depends on, you know, people's time and the level of work that they're doing like for and you know what they're producing like for example with me a lot of the things or a lot of the art that I come up with and the little shiny things that I put in some of those art I cut myself you know and sometimes I'm here holding hands with people anywhere from two hours to five depending what they want on their nails and not only does it have to be how it looks in a picture that I publicize for the world um but it has to be even that much better because it's, it's a customer in front of you, you know what I mean? And your art that you're putting on someone else is your billboard. <laughs> right. Like if someone goes out into the world and their nails look like trash, I don't want them saying I did it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So mm. you have right. to practice, you have to um, like charge for your worth. If something takes you five hours to do, you shouldn't be charging somebody a hundred dollars for that, you know? 
Um, and again, with pricing, if you don't understand how to price something, go to your peers, you know, have an open discussion with people in the industry with you. Hey, um, I'm doing X, Y, Z. I'm not sure exactly how to price this. How do I go about this? Like what, what, how does it start? Look around, like shop around, look at people's websites, like salons and stuff like that. Well, what if, if this salon charges X, Y, Z for this application, what should I be charging? Research is your best friend. <laughs> mm -hmm. and the internet is your best friend <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely learn from peers and research is definitely your best friend especially for me I'm you know trying to understand it and get better with pricing you know especially mm -hmm. you know and and you know I think like how you said you know understanding your worth is very very important understanding you know the charge especially based on the time and the materials and the products you use, especially if you're using high-end quality products whether it's gels That's or true. acrylics and, and things like that so uh, most definitely, I can most definitely agree. People don't get that. Like sometimes one of those little bottles costs sixteen dollars. You know what right. I mean? So times that by a hundred. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it. If you want quality products and you want, you know, the stuff that you see on the magazines and all that stuff, you got to pay for it. Just like yeah, you yeah. Would if you want great makeup and great hair, nails. You know, makeup comes off in a day, and people are willing to pay for it. Nails you can keep on anywhere up to a month. <laughs> So why not right. pay the price? Yeah, yeah, that's the thing, you know, and people pay, you know, a couple hundred dollars for a coach bag or a Louis Vuitton bag. It's like this, this, right. much, this as much as with hair, you know, you spend four hundred, six hundred dollars on, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So nail, nails is, is art, just like anything else. Yeah, it's just as important. Like people notice, you know, I have so many people that'll tell me like, oh, I have one client in particular, um, that shared with me she's like you know I'm, I'm an extremely shy person I don't you know really know how to like get to know people and start conversation with people um so she started getting like just extravagant nails just because and then she's like but they're conversation starters mm -hmm. <laughs> she's like people will come up to me like what's that on your nails who did your nails or whatever so it's like yo give us our flowers man <laughs> like we're right. just as important as any <laughs> yeah yeah that's the thing you know you know us as nail artists we work very hard in the stuff that we create you know so it's definitely important for us to have our flowers uh especially on a consistent base especially if it's in the fashion industry you know or in you know even just with the nail industry alone or the beauty industry alone I think that's very very important when we when we all get the credit of the hard work that we do you know on a set of nails so right I definitely agree with that wholeheartedly now, how important is, I want to get into nail prep. So for someone who is struggling with nail prep, how important is nail prep and how can someone improve in terms of just prepping one's nails, whether it's for gel or acrylic or regular polish? Um, make sure that like first communication with your clients, right? Mm -hmm. You want, and boundary. You always want to make sure you let your clients know hands on the table and you know, like, this is what we're going to do. That number right. one. And then also, uh, oil is not your friend. <laughs> and no shiny is not your friend. Um, if I had to give advice on prep, um, I don't know, because there's so much. <sighs> Focus on, let's see, what's important in prep? Just pay attention that nothing's shiny, basically. Mm -hmm. um gel doesn't gel and acrylic don't stick on to anything shiny there, there that's a good motto <laughs> remember that gel and acrylic doesn't stick on anything shiny <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah most definitely now with um nail mediums what has been like your favorite nail medium to use when doing like either nail art or just sculpting nails or what has been like your favorite nail mediums um product wise you mean like what yeah product yeah product wise yeah um, I love, um, the Japanese product that I use that I love a lot is, uh, leaf gel because mm -hmm. I love gel because it doesn't have any, you know, odors and things like that. Like I'm someone that's allergic to a lot of bullshit. So <laughs> as much as I would love to do acrylic and get into it, it's just not something that I can smell or have in this vicinity. So I just like using, um, gel because of the consistency of it. Um, it's odorless and um, the quality of leaf gel is just it's like one, one swipe and the colors A1. So mm -hmm. leaf gel. And I also like um, young nails a lot because um, 
I just the product and I like that they're so about educating their people as well. You know what I mean? Like they put out so many mm -hmm. tutorial videos. I always tell people, if you want to learn certain stuff, just go on the Instagram. <laughs> you'll find something. Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll get exposed to a lot of different new products. And and like I always said before, you know, you learn something new every day. And my whole favorite medium is working with gels, you know, using, I still use acrylic paint to paint diff different, like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but I do, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I like it because, you know, I could layer things easier, but I do use gel as well to paint. Mm. Um, but also too, I, I recently took a, a nail course with, uh, vanity projects and mm -hmm. we teach you you know the basis like you know with with nail prep or you know also to like working with gel doing nail art with gel and you know I think with gel it's pretty cool too because you know it's a quick cure you don't have to wait so long for it to dry and the thing is <laughs> yeah yeah that's the thing so I think you know like even with getting exposed to different products and different mediums like I got exposed with, with Presto gel. Like I never used Japanese type gel before. And I got to, to Presto. I was like, wow, these are really cool products. You know, so mm -hmm. you just, you know, you learn some every day with getting exposed to different types of products. Yeah. Cool. So, in, so in terms of within fashion, what is your whole take of fashion and nails just coming together? Especially like, you know, you have different designers such as like Libertine, the blondes and many other brands working with uh, nail artists. So what's your whole take with fashion nails just coming together? I think it's great because nails are just as important when you go out and you're going to, you know, go to a dinner or whatever, your nails are just as important as all your other upkeep. So that's great. Mm -hmm. I think they should continue <laughs> to do that. Um, the only thing I would say is maybe um, variety of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> You know what I mean? I feel like some in fashion, not all, but sometimes in some publications and stuff, they're kind of afraid to go the extra, you know, and they just want like the plain nails or whatever. Like, no, do it up, do it one Like people want to see that, put entertaining stuff in the magazine. Like people want to see the sculptures and the the weirdness and the obscure, right. like just do put in there. <laughs> I'm yeah. tired of seeing just <laughs> right right you know just basic colors just just on a nail yeah. want to see like, some pizzazz <laughs> yeah, there's so much that can be done mm -hmm. yeah absolutely now what is your whole take in terms of like when you first got into the nail industry to now what is your whole take and perspective on the evolution of the nail industry oh man I mean size the limit like when I started, like I said, we started doing nails with paint and polish to now, you know, being able to do something 3D, put it in a little machine and be good to go, you know? So I feel like it's growing and ever evolving, which is why it's important to continue educating yourself because it's just gonna continue to just, you know, get better. I'm sorry about this. I don't know why people keep calling me, but... <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I feel like it's, um, there's so much more stuff I'm sure that's coming, you know, especially from where we were five years ago to now. So mm -hmm. yeah, most definitely. Yeah, I could definitely agree. There's a lot of products on the market. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's a huge jump from, you know, 10, 10 years ago or five years ago. You know, there's yeah. a lot of trends that are coming out with, with the flame nails, the checkerboard, like the cool futuristic liquid nails that I've been seeing on social media. I love the liquid nail trend. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I myself right now, I'm trying to learn how to do, because like one thing about me is like, I will not just like do something right away and like put it out in the world. Like I have to practice and perfect it. But that liquid art is just so cool to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I like how we're, we're in an era where it's about also with nail art you know, not only is it a work of art, but it's like about experimentation, you know? Mm -hmm. So I like how when people are experimenting with different mediums and using different piercings on a nail or, you know, like yeah, how you said, the, the liquid nails and doing the, the, the access of tribal design, you know, mm -hmm. I've been seeing that on, on nails. So the nail industry has evolved a lot, you know, from the products to, you know, uh, machines and different, different objects that can help with, um, speeding up the service. So it's not taking so long to complete a service, especially working with right. gel or acrylic. So we've came a long way. 
it's mm-hmm. it's evolved a lot. Yeah, it has. It really has. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, how would you define success? Success is different for a lot of people, but for me, it would be um, just being at peace and um, recognition of sleep. <laughs> um, I've already, you know, had that. Like, I've, you know, had people reach out to me and be like, I was so XYZ, and someone was like, Did Miss Ladies do your nails? So, I mean, that's part of success. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just growing, evolving, and just being at peace with what you're doing, being happy. Um, with your work and, you know, just kind of focused on what centers you and makes you happy in your journey in art and just cutting out all the other stuff. I feel like yeah. that is success. Yeah, right. Exactly. And I also think that self-care is very, very important. And I yeah. wanted to touch on like mental health because I think that is, that's a very important aspect to maintaining not only what you love to do, but also your work ethic. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad with, you know, with now, especially in my generation, that a lot of people are talking about the importance of mental health and self-care is very important. You have to take yourself, take care of yourself first before, you know, you proceed to continue working on or loving what you do. So that's something I believe most definitely too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really important. Um, For a long time, like I, you know, it's no secret that I struggle with uh, mental health and I for a very long time didn't speak about it publicly because there was such a stigma um, with people speaking out about it, um, especially as a Dominican woman. <laughs> like sometimes, you know, you can say to someone, I'm feeling this way or whatever. And it's like, oh, you don't want to say that because people are going to think you're crazy. And it's not that, you know, mental health is important. If you don't feel okay, if you feel overwhelmed, if you need to talk to someone, if you need to just vent, um, just know that there are people that are willing to listen and Mm. understand what you're going and you're not alone this isn't an easy industry at all (laughs) you know what I mean just like anywhere there's things that happen that could you know affect people's moods and things like that um and with saying that also you know because that is the case you don't know what everyone's going through so Mm -hmm. just try to be kind as much as possible to the next person you know you don't you don't know what people are dealing with in their day-to-day life and how they came about to being in whatever position they're in so just be fucking kind yeah um, yeah yeah spread spread kindness you know that's that's the biggest thing that you can do now last but not least where could people find you on social media and how could people support your work well you can support my work via my Instagram or my TikTok, and they are both at Miss Ladies, M S L A Z I I Z, um, mm-hmm. and yeah, that's where you can find me for now. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Well, thank you, Miss Ladies, for jumping onto the show. Your work is absolutely incredible. Um, it's such a pleasure to get to know you and your work. And thank you so much for sharing your story and your knowledge. Just thank you for jumping onto the show. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I appreciate uh, you giving me your platform to just speak. Uh, my piece as an artist and just having people get to know me. So just thank you for having me. You are very most welcome. Well, take care. You too. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to click the bell for notifications. Also, follow me on my social media platforms and visit my website, asiaticbird.com, and be on the lookout for more interviews to come very soon. Take care and stay beautiful.